some of the how to sample, all right? So you wanna start with your hot and warm market. It's also known as your circle of influence. You know, your mom, your dad, your brother or sister, uncle, aunt, best friend, you know, basically people who will listen to what you have to say simply because it's you, out of respect for you, okay? It's also people who will forgive if you mess up the explanation completely. And if you're new, I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna let you in on a little secret. You're gonna, because we all did. We all messed it up. And it's just the way that it works. So that's why you wanna start with people who are a little bit more forgiving, because that's how you're actually kind of honing your skill and, and, and figuring out how to do things. They're kind of your test subjects, and they're gonna be a lot more forgiving than strangers would be, because we all know, you mess up with a stranger, man, they've got no reason to give you a second chance. Whereas your family, they're already used to you messing up. And they're, and they're used to giving you second and third and fourth and tenth and a uh, hundredth and a thousandth chances. So that's one of the reasons it's great to start that way. Also, being realistic, if you have a product that could potentially help somebody, who do you want to give that to or, or introduce it to first? Perfect strangers? or the people that you care about the most and love the most. That's, it's a no brainer, okay? All right, so then the question is, all right, well, which water should I give them? Because we have three different grades of our drinking water, right? 8.5, 9.0, and 9.5. Well, I usually start with the 9.5, but I will closely monitor um, their initial reactions. And what I'm watching for is a severe detox reaction. Because if it's something that, you know, because if a person experiences a detox reaction, it means they need the water more than somebody else who doesn't, okay? It's their body's way of saying, oh my gosh, thank you so much. I'm finally being able to get rid of some of this junk that's been built up in me and this is allowing it to happen. So thank you. Now, unfortunately though, if that comes in the form of maybe, you know, some stomach discomfort, maybe some diarrhea or, you know, something that you wouldn't necessarily view as a positive, you do have to understand that that is something that, you know, you might have to explain to somebody, okay? So don't be afraid to tell them about the detox, okay? Um, now, if it's uncomfortable, you have really two choices. Either bring down the pH level of the water that they're going to be drinking, or, and this is depending on who it is, tell them to keep it and expedite the process. So when I say depending on who it is, if I'm dealing with somebody that I'm not real familiar with, maybe is a little elderly or has some issues to where the detox is hitting them a little bit harder and they're uncomfortable with it, I will bring the, the level down because I don't want it to be a discomfort thing for them, okay? But it is nice, though, when they do have something happen because they know the water is doing something, okay? That's one of the reasons I don't like to start with 8.5 is because, yeah, the detox can be gradual, but so can the impact, so I'd rather have them kind of like maybe have something that's uncomfortable so they know something's happening and then we'll deal with the, you know, adjusting that, that comfort level. But if it's somebody who I like really know, like if, let's say it's a close friend, and this has actually happened a few times, where I've given them the water and something happens. Hey man, I was getting these like, you know, my stomach was kind of hurting. So basically what I would say is, yeah, that's great. Shut up and drink more water. Because what I'll tell them is, look, the reason you're having the stomach discomfort is your body's finally being able to get rid of some of this junk you've built up in your system for so long. It's finally being able to expel it. So a lifetime's worth of junk that's inside of you is getting kicked out of you within just a little bit of time. What, do you think you're not going to feel that? Of course you are. But let me ask you something. In all seriousness, would you rather, would you rather get rid of the built up junk in your body faster or slower? Which one would you rather do? I think most people would rather get it out of them as quickly as possible, even if it's a little uncomfortable doing so, instead of, you know, making the process take two or three weeks, you know, when you can have it take two or three days, okay? So I like to start with the 9.5, but be aware. And so basically, you know, I, I always say this, I throw my prospects into the deep end of the pool. It's 9.5 feet deep, okay? but I'm a damn good lifeguard. So I monitor if they're, if they're having any problems, okay? And if they are, I dive in and I come to the rescue and I make sure that they're good, okay? 
But just like you would probably do with some of your closest friends, when you see them struggling in the water and they're starting to look like they're going to drown, you just give them a little bit of a hard time before you end up actually helping them. So that's, uh, you know, well, that's just me, I guess. <laughs> um, and like I said, most people want to know that it's doing something, okay? So, you know, be careful about starting at a too low of a pH, you know, because you're going you're gonna to limit that the effectiveness of how it's actually, you know, helping, all right? Now, how much? That's a good question, too. You want to figure out how many family members there are, and you want to try to get the entire household drinking the water. And let me tell you why. So, when Daniel, my sponsor, first started giving me the water, yeah, people who know the story, yes, okay, I dunked it out, didn't drink it, I told him I was, because I didn't want to hurt his feelings. And then finally my wife you know, smacked me around a little bit, figuratively, not literally, and said, what are we doing? Let's at least try this. So we did. The, re the reality was the reaction that my wife and son had were more, were more impactful on me than the reaction that I had because my reaction was very little at the, at the very beginning. It really was because I needed it. The sampling for me didn't work that well because my issues needed that full potency all the time the out the spout type potency um, to push me over my edge of really getting the benefit and everything. So the fact that if, if I would have been the only one drinking the water and my wife and son weren't, we would not be having this conversation right now. This would not be happening because I wouldn't be here because it didn't have a strong enough effect back then to get me to move forward. However, my wife and son both had pretty pretty dramatic things happen that I was like, it got my attention and it caught my, it kept my attention. Okay. And it really was the thing that motivated me to move forward. So if you're going to sample the household, man, sample the whole household. Cause you never know. You might be looking at the head of the household as the decision maker or whatever, but it might be the effect the water has on somebody else. That's more important to that person than themselves that will actually get them to move forward. Okay. So just remember that. Um, now, again, how much water do you give them? Well, here's another question. Do they have any pets? Specifically cats and dogs. Okay, why? Because if they have pets, you definitely want to get them enough water for their pets as well. Okay, now the general rule for water consumption for a human being is half your body weight in ounces each day. Okay, so the average family, you know, a mom, a dad, two kids, they usually use, you know, two to four gallons of water a day. And I'm not saying that they're, they're drinking what they should be drinking, but that's typically, you know, if they are drinking water, two to four gallons a day is what they're going to go through, okay? So just kind of like use that when you're calculating how much water you're going to need to give somebody, okay? Next is how often. You want to try to plan on getting them fresh water every three to four days for two reasons. One, that is about the, the length of time that the properties of the water will still be there and it's still creating some type of benefit with its ability to hydrate and, you know, do those things. So, you know, um, that's a good time frame, you know, every three to four days on the outset. OK, um, and also remember that it's better to give too much than not enough. Okay, it's okay if when you come to drop off the next batch, if they have a little bit left over, what I typically will tell a person to do is if they have some left over is I'll say, okay, in your yard, I want you to pick your favorite plant. Okay, I want you to pick a really nice plant that you would love to see thrive. And I'll say, from now on, anytime you have leftover water, I want you to pour it on that plant. When I come, just pour the leftover and then I'll get you a fresh batch. And if you have any leftover, pour it on your plant. And I've seen some real incredible results as a result of doing that. People's plants that like right out the door, all of a sudden, man, they just start going crazy. Why? Well, it's because of higher quality of water. What do you expect? The plant's a living thing that needs water to live. So it makes sense. Okay. Um, now, here's another thing. You need to be willing to deliver the water when you start. Okay. And I'm going to emphasize that when you start. There is a process involved. I'm not going to go over the entire process because there's a lot of different places it's available. Um, one of which is in the book, Ride the Wave. Yeah. It is available in there and it really spells out exactly the process of each step of exactly what to do, okay? 
Um, but you do need to be willing to deliver the water because you want to make drinking the water as easy as possible when you start with a prospect. Because if you make it difficult for them at all, they will not do it. They're going to stop. And if you, I mean, don't take, don't try to pull them out of their comfort zone right out of the bat. You know, try to get them to come to your house to pick it. No, this is part of the gig. This is part of if you're going to sample water, commit to doing this part of it because this will be much more effective for you. So if you're going to do something, do what's most effective or don't do it. It doesn't make any sense to do it if it's not being effective. Okay. Also, you need to remember that when a person first starts drinking the water, they are doing you a favor by trying your water. So remember that and, and understand that's how the dynamic of the relationship is that they're doing you a favor. That changes when they contact you and ask for more, okay? Because typically what happens is you'll get like one or two times of you sampling a person, you contact them, here, I'm going to bring you your water. You contact me, I'm going to come by and drop off this new batch for you. When that all of a sudden changes and they initiate the call to you, hey, Jerry, I'm out of water. Do you think you can bring me some, bring me some more? The dynamic of the relationship flips. It goes from them doing me a favor by trying the water to me doing them a favor by providing it for them. Okay? So be aware if and when that happens because it's a very pivotal moment that then you can start kind of pulling them out of their comfort zone a little bit, making access to that water maybe not quite as easy it was as it was before, you know, because then you got to make them work for it. Because there's and there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that because you're still helping them. Okay. Now some people ask me, well, what info should I provide people as I'm doing this? Well, first off, this right here, this right here is the sampling sheet. This right here is a sampling sheet that I created. That basically it's tips and hints to how to get the most out of your samples. Pretty sure this is on the going6a.com website under the printable resource library. So if you want to get a copy of this, just go on there and, you know, <laughs> print it out and give it to your, give it to your prospect. You know, basically it's, it, you know, it talks about drinking it, how to store it, using it with other beverage, you know, for water-based beverages, what to expect, you know, calling if you need more and to save the empty bags, you know, because they are reusable. So that's a really good thing to use. So that's the first thing that I do. Um, and you also remember the reason that you want to give them this information is that you are providing them the best chance at experiencing benefit by letting them know what they should be doing during their sampling. Okay. So when it comes to full information, I like to say basic introductory info. Okay. Shot glasses of information. Not 55-gallon drums. Look, I know we get really excited about all this newfound information that we have, all this newfound knowledge. You know, we want to flex our mental muscle and show people how smart we are and how, you know, in tune we are and how ahead of the game we are because we know about this technology. It's real easy and it's real tempting sometimes to do that, okay? But when you're providing a shot glass of information, let's them wet, wet their whistle, they get satisfied with that, and then their thirst will come again, okay? And you provide them a little bit more information based on what, you know, what their response is to you of the info that you're giving them. Now, if you hit them with a 55-gallon drum, it's going to be like this. And then they get drenched. They can't breathe. They feel like they're drowning. It's too much information too quickly. So don't do that, okay? I've been guilty of it myself. I know. You know, because if you know me, you know I like to talk. You know, if you have a question for me, my five-minute answer could take 50 minutes. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, you won't have to ask me another 20 different questions because I covered those two in my answer, okay? So I do have a method to my madness, you know. Um, so that is the way that I do it. So, you know, give them information as, as it's pertinent, okay? So now... One of the other things is you need to let each time that you replenish their samples be an opportunity for you to give them a little bit more information, okay? That's why, you know, leading with the water is a really great way to do things because you continue to give yourself the opportunity to provide them additional information, answer questions, keep on giving them water, you know, doing all these different things, okay? Now, here's another one that's really important is you need to listen to your prospects 
so that you can determine the best approach. What I mean by that is, you know, if you're talking to one of your prospects and they tell you how active they are, okay, well, that means you might need to give them even more water than you normally would because they're going to be needing it more, okay? Let's say they love to cook. Same thing. You might need to start giving them maybe a little 11.5, maybe a little 2.5, you know, in addition to the, to the drinking water that they could cook with, but they could start, you know, trying it out with cleaning fresh fruits and vegetables or cleaning and sanitizing their actual kitchen with a non-toxic water product, which is awesome, right? So you need to listen to what they're saying so that you know how to advance. Now, along those same lines though, just so you know, I normally only sample the drinking water, okay? But sometimes if it seems like it's called for, I will sample the other grades of water. You know, whether it be the beauty water, whether it be the 2.5 for the sanit you know, the sanitizing water, whether it be the 11.5 for the, for the cleansing water, whatever it needs to be, if I think that those waters will help my prospect identify benefit for them, then I need to be willing to do that. But for the most part, one of the main reasons I don't do those extras is because you have to remember that the more waters you share during sampling, the less punch the product will have if they actually get it. So if you've already had the chance to experience the 2.5, the 11.5, the 5.5, and all the drinking waters, when you get your machine, what do you have to look forward to using? Nothing. But if all you've gotten was the, the you know 9.5 drinking water, when you get your machine, now all of a sudden you have access to the 2.5, the 11.5, the 5.5, and it now makes that machine more than just a water filter, okay? That's one of the reasons that it's important that you, you explain all the different waters and how it's used, because this isn't a water filter, okay? It's not. This is a medical-grade water ionizer that happens to have an internal filter. This is not a water filter that happens to have an ionization chamber. It is very different, okay? And a lot of the other brands that are out there, they are water filters that happen to have an ionization chamber in them where we are not, okay? Because we don't lead with our filter. We lead with our ionization technology and ability. We don't lead with the filter. Why? Well, because honestly, the internal filter of the Enagic machines, they're, they're good quality, but they don't do this big scope of all these different things. Basically, it's, you know, sediment, heavy metals, and chlorine, that's really the, what it does. That's why if you're really gonna be sampling a lot of water, look into some pre-filters, okay? Look into them, why? Because it's gonna extend the life of your internal filter and make the quality of the water even better, okay? All right, where am I here? Okay, be willing to invest in your prospect, okay? And that, what I mean by that is if you're not willing to invest in your prospect, don't expect them to be willing to spend $4,000 on a product that you're trying to introduce to them. You need to invest, your, you need to invest, but the investment is not just monetary, okay? You need to be willing to invest your time, okay? And I know a lot of people have regular nine to five jobs or even not regular nine to five jobs. So they're working a full-time job, but maybe they're doing a graveyard shift or something, you know? There's so many different scenarios that people are doing, especially when they first start this. Okay, that you have to figure out how to make time for certain things. But I can promise you this, if you're willing to make the time, it will pay off. It might take a little bit of time, it might take some effort. Now, actually, I'm not gonna even say that. It will take some time and it will take some effort, okay? But it's worth it, all right? So be willing to invest some time. You're gonna be willing, to, you need to be willing to invest some gas. It's gonna cost you some money. You're gonna be putting gas in your car more regularly if you're delivering water to people, okay? Understand that and realize that it is a, it's a necessary expense to do this, but it's also a business expense, so you will be able to write that off. So save all those receipts and everything, okay? You also need to work in the cost of the sample bags, okay? Because it does, they're not free. These, they, you know, there was a lot of money went into designing those and creating them, so if you wanna be able to utilize the best and have the greatest chance of success, then you use the best, that's it, bottom line. Um, have some money set aside for some materials and, for, and some info. But start with stuff like this, okay? Start with stuff like this, why? Because this is free, man. I'm giving you guys access to the thing that I created for my team, absolutely free. So utilize it, you know, use those different resources that are available. Then if you need to do stuff like get some brochures or you know, get some of the different magazines or things like that that are available, 
that's when you do that. But when you first get started, hey, you know what? Use what you can and be as cost effective as possible because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to break this to everybody. This is a business, okay? So you want to do this like a business, all right? Um, and here's another one too. Don't forget to provide them with a personal drinking bottle, okay? Because it's going to give them something to drink out of. And if you do, if you play your cards right, it's also going to have be a possible marketing or exposure tool for you. And here's what I mean by that. So if you were to have a couple of these laying around, and when you get a new person, you give them one of these as a personal drinking bottle, they start carrying this thing around, they're going to have other people asking them what this is, okay? Well, by asking that prospect what this is and them telling them, it's engaging them in the, pro in the project. It's engaging them in the business, and it's promoting you without even trying, okay? So something like this can be a tool that, yes, again, there's a cost to stuff like this, but if, if you can turn the cost of this into profitability, then it's a justifiable cost and it's an okay cost, okay? So it's important to remember that they, because a lot of, I've had people where I brought them water back in the days when I was doing this and when I showed up, they, they, the first thing they did is they took their bottle, they took it off, and they go, oh good, I was out of water and they just started drinking right out of the bottle and I was like, ugh. Now, I always made it to where when I gave people bottles, I gave them the bottle, they were dedicated. I would use one bottle for one family. You know, that's just the way that it would be. So I'd have a whole batch of bottles that were dedicated to this family. So, you know, I, I would tell them don't drink out of it because they're actually, you know, you're, you're probably messing up the batch by doing that in the first place. But the reason that you want to make sure that they have a personal drinking bottle is because when I asked a person, why are you drinking it out of that? Why don't you use another bottle? Their response, and it, it was, and it was on me. They said, I don't have one. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, Jerry, what's wrong with you, man? You're going to bring somebody a gallon of water and ask them to take it with them everywhere that they go, but you're not going to give them something that is a reasonable, you know, something for them to be able to carry around in this day. Because, you know, carrying around a gallon of water like this, for a lot of people, they won't do it. You know, if you were going to, if you went to a restaurant for lunch, would you take this in with you and put it on the table? Most people don't want to, okay? That's why having a personal bottle is much more advantageous than having a, you know, a big one gallon jug or whatever, okay? Um, so remember that. Okay, now I'm gonna get into a little bit of um, technique. Now most of what I'm about to cover is covered very in depth in the new Ride the Wave book. Uh, I should have pulled this out before. I'm not even gonna, I got too many things back there. Okay, so I got my little dragon protecting it. But basically, in Ride the Wave, the sixth edition, um, this is covered very in depth, okay? So it's fingers and strings is what I call this. So fingers are direct people that you are sampling, all right? So what you want to ask yourself is, how many fingers do you have? Now, for most people, you got this. Well, my recommendation is, remember how many fingers you actually have because you want to be careful of having too many direct samplers at one time, okay? And the reason is because what's going to happen is you're going to become a water delivery boy or girl, okay? So you don't want that to happen. Why? Because that's not what you're trying to achieve. You're trying to build a business and this is just part of the process. So be careful with that, and, and, and I think you should adhere to what I call the two-hand rule.